They don't have it. What do you mean, they don't have it? They don't have it. How can they not have it? They do have it. That's the whole idea of this place. Are you sure you pronounced it correctly? I did. Say it. Say it back to me. Chateau Brewer La Rose. See? No, that's not correct. Gruel Lajos. Say it. Gruel Lajos. Better! <laughs> now go ask the manager. <laughs> but why can't we call her over? Because as I told you, they only serve on special occasions. Like anniversaries. And you have to ask them for it especially. I see. Mm. So, uh, the scene you're doing? In my acting class? Yeah, what, uh, what is it? Oh, well, you know, it's an acting exercise. Tell me about it. Really? Yeah, what, uh, what is it about? Well, we're exploring relationships. Ah, intimacy. <laughs> it's not like, um... I mean, it's just... Relationships? Yeah. Like yours and mine type thing? Type thing. Oops. Let's get you... It's okay. Yeah. We'll just get you... I over. said... It's okay. Jen? Who are you doing this scene? Who are you doing the scene with, Jen? I'm doing the scene with one of the actors in the group. His name is Daniel. And in the scene, he is comforting me. Because I had a really, really bad day. He is caring. He is warm. He is kind. He is loving. And my character, my character is being caring and warm and loving. Back to him. Let's just get the bill. That's just deep. We can't go to the police. Because I killed Jimmy. I killed him. With that stupid boat phase. We were at a flower show in, in Buxton, and, and there was this blue glass phase that I really liked that had a picture of a boat on it. 
And so that night, Jimmy came home, and he had the vase, and he put it on the counter, and I was like, oh, Jimmy, that was so thoughtful. Because, you know, maybe this was his way of telling me he added what was needed to my savings and bought the boat. <laughs> but he had that glum look in his eye, which always makes me feel bad for him, even though it means he's done something awful. And he looks at me and he says, Baby, you know all that money you saved for y'all little boat and trip across the Atlantic? It's gone. <laughs> what do you mean? It's gone. And then he starts going on about how he bought his brother's car, which doesn't even fully work, by the way, and how his brother could really use the money. Oh, well, Bloomer, a rage came over me, this dark, powerful rage, and I don't know what kind of glass can withstand a human head. But this one sure did. I mean, all I wanted to do was shatter the boat base. That's it. I didn't mean to kill him, but, but the damn thing wouldn't shatter, and I just kept pummeling his head till his head didn't really look like a head anymore. And the damn boat base didn't have so much as a scratch on it. <sighs> then, then I hear this ringing in my ears, and I think I'm going crazy. <laughs> I turned out to be the telephone, and it was you. You didn't ask me how I was doing. You, you had your own journey to plan. But, but that was fine by me. The fewer questions you'd ask, the better. You know, we could get out of town and, and escape it all. I could be free, you know? But now this, don't you see? They'll throw me in jail and make you an accessory to both crimes. We have to change our identity, okay? Y your name, your age, your history, all of it. Okay, my name. My name's going to be something nice, something like um, Rosemary, but different. Harpishwood, Hallman, Harpishwood Hallman, yes, and you're my husband, Rick, Low Van Tun, Rick LeBannon, Rick LeBannon Hallman, okay, and, and where are we from? Where are we from, Loomer? Come on, we got to be from somewhere. Idaho, yes, and, and, and we've been struggling potato farmers, and, and we're out east because we're looking to start growing parsnips. No, 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 we'll buy that. Um, turnips, and, and we met on a cruise, and I, I was a dancer at sea, and you were on your honeymoon with an unidentified Hollywood starlet, but she only cared for her career. And you wanted her to work on your farm, but, but then you saw me in a little burlesque number called Potato Skins. And it was very sultry. You fell in love with me, and I came back to Idaho and became a proper woman until a potato famine struck, which threatened not only our livelihood, but our very marriage. You took to drinking. I delved into color by number watercolor. It wasn't until we saw an ad for turnip farming was when we finally faced ourselves in the mirror and said, we have to do this. We have to go out there and change. Not just for the business, but for each other. It's a beautiful story, isn't it? You think you can't remember it? So did you leave the cure I told you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. You sure? Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? Why? Why are you all frazzled for? Am I? <laughs> yeah. Frazzled and hesitating. 
hesitant. Yes, hesitating. You want me to spell out for you? I know what hesitate means. It's an early 17th century word from Latin hesitat, stuck fast, left undecided. From the verb hesitare, from hirere, sick, stay. Jimmy, what? Why did you hesitate? I'm sorry. You're sorry? Why are you sorry? What did you do with the key? I, I promise. I promise, I promise, I had it, I had it in my hand. And then, and, and then, then, and then, swoosh, I went blue. it. I, I mean it blew, and, and it startled me, because I, I was scared I'd be caught. And then, and then, swoosh, I went blue it out of my hand into the drain. The key flew out your fucking hand into the drain, Jimmy. That's what you're telling me. Yes, yes, went, swoosh. Going to swoosh your face right off your skull if you say that one more time. I'm sorry! I'm really sorry, okay? Oh. How am I supposed to replace the documents I took? I'm gonna find out who it was now, and I won't be able to go to another place. Which means I don't have access to the house anymore. I know. Shut up! Shut up, you idiot! What the hell was I thinking? Getting you involved in the first place, huh? Huh? Well, I, I, can, I can do this, little brother. Do I trust me? I'm gonna help you. You ain't no shit, you idiot, you moron with no brains in your head. Well, I have brains, just not for this type of thing. Not for this type of thing. Exactly. That's it. You're out. But I can help you get the codes. You can't even keep a key in your hand. Huh? How the hell do you propose you're going to extort money from a crypto billionaire? I, 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 I got. You, you got, you got, you got, you got what? You got what, you idiot, huh? Why are you wearing a stupid face? I got a job. I got a new job as his house bookkeeper. So I can have access to his office like 24 seven. Analyzing data will send you fucking insane. I'm telling you. Don't get me wrong. I'm good at my job. Great at it. But calculating all the logistics, all the contributing factors as to why the business might not be performing, and what can be done to ensure sad factors and barriers moving forward, blah, blah, blah. It's draining. I'm drained of enthusiasm, of energy. I'm drained of life. But one thing I'm not drained of is competence. I can do this job with my eyes closed and my hands tied behind my back. So yeah, my boss loves me. That's something. So yeah, I come here every Monday and I get this to last me the week. Or the brandy, depends how my commission's looking. I just need to take the edge off, okay? I need a way to escape the emptiness between getting home from work and going to bed. I know. My dad always told me to let God be the source of my strength. So why? Why don't I feel strong? Why in a time that I have to be at my strongest do I feel at my weakest? And since dad got ill, I have to be the man of the house. And it's like, don't lean on me. Don't fucking lean on me. I've barely got strength enough for myself. I haven't got strength for you all. But yeah, it's gonna be a few months. Year best, prostate cancer. He didn't want to get it checked because he would never let another man put his finger up his ass. He used to joke about it. He said the only way he would let a man put his finger up his ass is if they put him to sleep for 48 hours. And so he wouldn't feel it, and so the man could get as far away as possible 
to stop him from killing him. And I used to laugh. We all did. But now, when I look at him, and it's like, fuck you. Fuck your pride. Fuck your pride. That's leaving me and the rest without dad. And mom without a husband. And nana without her son. And fuck you for leaving these shoes that are too big for me to fill behind. Not that I would say that to any of my family or my friends. But there's this unspoken thing where, as a man, you have to have this heartless, terminator-type character that doesn't feel anything. But that isn't me! I'm only telling you this because you don't give a toss, but you know better than to interrupt me. But that's fine. That's what I need. And I need to get some headspace. Maybe I'll go to Mongolia. Have you been to Mongolia? Seems chill. But yeah, that's, that's all. Car, please. The summer's shining, so I look to the end of the block where the stray cat runs out of Gandhi's corner shop again. Man's name is actually Gandhi. No one knows what his actual name is, but someone started calling him Gandhi one time, and now he answers to it. Gandhi runs after the cat, got a broomstick, bark his son in his language, fuming, because he can't seem to make the cat stop coming in his shop. Problem is, Gandhi got one of them annoyingly slow closing shop doors. You know that door that when you try to be polite and shut it after yourself? You tug it, but it's not stopping and wants you to know that it's independent. And it's gonna shut itself in its own slow time. Thank you very much. And you're like, listen door, I was only trying to help you close because you look like you were struggling. So no need getting independent on me. And he just flick your hand away from its ungrateful handle and leave it to take its time showing off itself. Which unfortunately for Gandhi is just enough time for that stray cat to sleep in his corner shop. So, I watch Gandhi chase a straighting out into the street, swinging the broomstick. Only in doing that, he abandoned his post, leaving the corner shop vacant. And behind him, a group of them rude what what girls quickly slip into the empty corner shop like, a what? 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 The what what girls think they've got in without Gandhi knowing. But to Gandhi's credit, he fitted a jingle jingle above that slow door at the weekend. So, he hears the jingle jingle and spins around so quick, like in the cartoons, making a donut on the pavement with his cheap brother VHS shoes. Dashes back to his shop and kicks the what what girls out. They leave the shop black. What? What? What do you mean? I ain't buying nothing. I ain't wanna buy nothing. I've changed my mind. What? Like, seriously, I'm not gonna walk there. I'm gonna be gross and sweaty and just like, no, Nadia! Who the hell are you? Excuse me? Excuse you, who the hell are you? Nadia, there's somebody in here. Who is this person? Who are you? I was coming over to introduce myself. But if you don't want to meet, it's fine by me. Ugh. <sighs> You Nadia's son, aren't you? Nadia is... The help, I mean the housekeeper. Huh? <laughs> what are you, you're not allowed to hunt. Not allowed to hunt? In my house, without identifying yourself. <sighs> hmm. Did you just check me out? <laughs> you? Must be Michael's daughter. Michael? That's Mr. Anderson to you. Nadia! Is it? You sure about that? Hmm. Arrogant. 
dismissive, judgmental, entitled, cute. Pretty actually. <laughs> Very pretty. Yeah, certainly fits Michael's description of his youngest daughter. I'm Asana Kimi. Child prodigy. AI engineer. Entrepreneur. Oh, and owner of Future AI. We just purchased your father's company and its assets in one of the biggest merge deals of the century. His London residence is also part of the deal. Technically, this is now my house. Uh, I understand. It's okay. Why didn't he tell me? I mean, why are you here? Well, he invited me over to meet you. Since we are of similar age, you know, he thought, obviously wrongly, we might be friends. You know, hang out. What's your Insta? I don't have one. Social media is so last decade. Oh yeah, I mean I don't I don't really mm. have. You screamed at Nadia quite loudly there. Maybe you'll I'll apologize. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. Nadia! I'm so resolved. I'm so ready. And there is a world out there and I will see it and you won't stop me. I will be an explorer. I will have adventures. I will make new friends. I will fall in love. I'll be like Christopher Columbus or, or Francis Drake or Magellan or whatever because there is a world and I'm so determined. And when I come back, if I come back, no one will recognize me. I will be like a movie star or a famous person and no one will recognize me. <laughs> and I will see through everyone. I will see through everyone. Even you. I will look right through you and you will look at me and you'll think to yourself, who the hell is that? And I'll just smile at you. Yeah, I'll just smile and mumble something profound or something really famous or something that someone really famous would say because that's who I'll be, because I'll know a lot more. I'll know a hell of a lot more when I come back. Or maybe I'll just say that I hate you because I can see through you. I fucking hate you. Under my breath, to the wall, you won't even know you're nothing to me. You're a ghost to me. And I don't care. Everyone is a ghost. Everyone. And I'm the only one. I'm the only one who means more than you or anyone else. Do you, do you think I should wait a little longer before I join the group to for your treat? Sounds good and everything. I just, 
I don't know if I'm ready to do this with other people. Well, I really feel, and this is my professional opinion, that attending the group therapy would be exactly what you need right now. We'll be trialing a new therapy technique, and I think that you would be the perfect candidate for it. So, should I count you in? Dr. Lewis. Uh huh. Oh, Dr. Lewis. Um. Stephen thinks I shouldn't come to these sessions anymore. Stephen said that, did he? Yes, he did. He said that I should come away from these sessions feeling better, but I always feel worse. I'm sorry, Taylor. You never mentioned that to me before. I know, I'm, I'm sorry. Why not? Because... Because I don't know if I'm supposed to feel worse. Am I supposed to feel worse because somehow that's better for me? Because I'm being forced to go through shit in order to feel better. Are you asking me? Yes. What do you think? I don't know. Have you thought that perhaps there may be some other external cause for the distress that you experience after our sessions? Like what? Well, who is it that picks you up and drops you off after our sessions? Stephen. What are you... Stephen loves me. He's the only person who has been there through all of it. Well, that's not true. I am here. But, but, but you're... Your doctor. Yes. And as your doctor, my only interest is to keep you safe. Do you understand? Are you trying to say that... That he doesn't... That he isn't? Stephen loves me. Do you think if he loved you, he would have asked you not to see me and not to continue with these sessions, which I, and to a great extent you, also know are good for you? Now, should I count you in? What's the new technique? It's revolutionary. You'll be an entirely different person afterwards. Do you think I'm ready for it? Yeah. I told her to jump. You only ever loved her, ever. And I loved her too. I loved her so fucking much that I wanted to cause you pain. I really wanted to cause you so much pain that you would never be able to breathe again. And so I told her to jump. I made her jump. I told her that if she didn't jump, I'd tell you the truth about what happened to your pearl earrings. The ones you thought you'd lost. And she was so scared about what you'd do to her that she... She did. 
chez Dieu. But as soon as I saw her there in the water, struggling for air, bobbing up and down, going under, coming back up again, going under again. As soon as I saw that, I felt this incredible. I could literally feel my heart tightening so hard. It's like. I could feel it crack, rip in two, and I wanted to save her. I really did, but it was so fast, so fast. You, you don't even know how quickly it. It was over in seconds, and I, I, I only ever wanted you to love me the way that you loved her. That's all. I wish now more than anything that she would have come instead of me. I wish that I'd have jumped instead of her because it would have saved me so much fucking. So, who owns this place? It belongs to James's father. Has James's dad joined the group too? No, but he's a strong supporter. James just made it happen. He's been so dedicated ever since he joined. Yeah, he has. He's just gone that extra mile, you know? Why are you saying it like that? Like what? Saying what? Like I'm not dedicated to the cause the same way. I am dedicated. Just because I didn't do the Jacob Farms thing the other night. Jacob's Farm is the site of mass exterminations for thousands of innocent animals. We had one opportunity to take them down. You had one task, Eve. One simple thing to do. One illegal thing, Liz. No, no, no. You do not get to change the conversation. You do not get to make this about what's legal. Currently, it's legal, apparently, to take the lives of thousands of innocent animals and no one seems to care. And you're telling me stealing a few security codes is a moral problem for you? I would have got in trouble, Liz. I could have lost my job. It's not just about the morality. Yes, fine. You said. I'm sorry I didn't come through. I believe in this too. As I said, I'll, I'll make it up to you. Well... That's good to know, because that's actually why we're here. What's this? These are some of the most senior workers at Jacob's Farms. James and I have been working on a new campaign. Campaign Scorch Eyes. What's the campaign? What are you planning to do with them? Scorch Eyes will include exposure therapy. Exposure therapy? Yes, the campaign will include forcing them to watch scenes of torture. Animal torture? Absolutely not! Human torture. What? But why? You can't do that. That's wrong. And how will you force them to do that anyway? Relax. The human torture has already happened. James got some access to some horrible war scenes. We're just going to expose them to it so that they can see, so that they can understand that this is what they do every single day to thousands of innocent, voiceless animals. How will you force them to do that? What are these circles? Why are these two marked? Liz. What's that noise? 
Who is that? That must be Stephen Palmer and Lucy Ng in time for their exposure therapy. Which you're going to help conduct. Yes, yes, you can call me Sashka, Mr. Vaziliev. It is your daughter's name. How lovely. You are, you are shouting your own daughter's name now. Ah, okay. You would fuck Sashka if she would allow it. Yes, yes, Mr. Vaziliev. I've heard that one before. Mostly from politicians. Oh, don't look at me like that. I'm just living up to my national stereotype, as is expected of me. An Eastern European sex worker. I need a plumbing job in the morning and I will become a human embodiment of my country. Smoking cigarettes, drinking vodka, and shouting kurva mat on every sentence. It'd be much easier than dealing with employers, who never believe I have an actual degree, and yell at me upon our first encounter. Your English is so good! Well done! Some older men say that to me when they want me to fuck them. Little do they know, being patronised makes my pussy implode. There was this one man who understood that about me. How I hate being patronised. I still dream of him to this day. His strong hands lifting me up. His movements showing desperation to touch every part of my body. His wanting, needing me and my youth, my enthusiasm, my frivolousness. I am an adventure. I am an unknown land. I am a wet fucking daydream and an ego boost. And I love it. Every bit of it. Hey. Hey. How are you? Exhausted. I need a hot shower. We run out of hot shower. The boiler isn't working again. Ugh, I'm sick of this shit. They've been here three times to fix it. I know. Are you okay? I think so. Your boyfriend dropped you home? Yeah. Cool, I'm gonna go for a cold shower then. Take off your sweater. What? Just take it off. What's wrong with you? Are you hiding something, Magda? No, I'm not. See? Nothing. Your trousers. This is ridiculous. Now. I said now. Take it off, please, Max. Stop it now. Please, just take it off. You asked him to go for the legs instead so you could hide it from me. He's not what you think he You is. are covered in bruises. I'm not buying your bullshit anymore. I asked him to. What? I asked him to beat me up and yes, I didn't think he would inspect my legs so I told him not to hold back. Why? Because it's the only thing I feel. I can't feel anything but pain. I need it. He, he loves me, Anna. He's just doing it for me. God, I, I had no idea. When? Since when did this start happening? The pain thing. You know. I'm 
gonna murder that fucking asshole.